First of all, let us come out of that myth that operational technologies are isolated to the uh, IT technology or the world. They are being an integrated part because without digitalization of IT OT integration, you cannot run the system right now. Hi, I'm Rort Pollock, and this is the second season of the Secure Tracks podcast, where we host rail industry leaders to talk about operational rail technologies and cybersecurity. In this episode, we're speaking with Manvendra Singh from the National Capital Region Transport Corporation, or NCRTC for short, which is in New Delhi. Manvendra Singh has been a group general manager with NCRTC for the last year and a half. He is also now the chief executive officer of NCRTC Express Transit Limited, or NETRA, in India. Prior to his current role, Mr. Singh served in a variety of roles, including chief engineer for signaling and telecommunications for the last 13 years with Indian Railways. From a cybersecurity perspective, Mr. Singh is focused on implementing strategies to protect critical transportation infrastructure from evolving cybersecurity threats. Manvendra, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Bolak, for giving the opportunity to have the conversation reference to the, especially with the uh, secure tracks. Uh, thank you so much. Absolutely. We're glad you're here. Look forward to the conversation. So, Manvendra, I, I like to start off on a personal note, actually. I like to hear from people about how they got into cybersecurity and how they got into rail. So why don't you tell us your story a little bit about how you got into security industry and, and the rail industry in particular? Okay. So the if we start from the journey of the as per se rail industry, uh, basically I belong to the technical part that I have done uh, engineering in electronics and communications. Uh, from there, we started. I started the journey towards the rail industry. Uh, I was a railway engineer and chief engineer, as you have rightly mentioned in the early conversation also. Then, uh, like railway industry is always evolving in the technology part. So, mm -hmm. mainly in the operational domain, like signaling and SCADA and traction and power supply, everything you see is evolving to a level where uh, digitization of the railway, or we can say the digitalization of the railways is in a forefront of any transport sector. So what is happening that uh, everything is now pushing towards automation. We are moving from that horse riding cars to the trails and then to the train. So, And then the integration comes into the picture that whenever you want to have a commuter perspective integrated into that operational technology part of the railways. Right. So here comes the IT and OT sector. I, being an electronics and communication engineer, find found that uh, how I can contribute to that technology part to the as a global technology sector for railways. Uh, from there, the as an NCRTC administration thought that okay, uh, now we are going for a commuter perspective orientation of the organization. So have an integration of this IT and OT. There comes the challenge of uh, securing the ITOT integration with cyber perspective. And that challenge, uh, I per se, as an electronics engineer or communication, telecommunication, you know, find that challenge must be addressed technically and how strategically we can point it out or address to them so that down the line, five years, 10 years, we can have a sustainable system so far the security of the concern as the operational features. And so this is in a nutshell how I proceed towards this cyber security domain. Got it. You love a challenge, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, and for our audience, and especially for some of those that are outside of India, can you tell us a little bit about uh, NCRTC and specifically the scope of your role there and maybe some of the key challenges you're working to address? Okay. So... I will start from here. The NCRTC persistence for National Capital Region Transport Corporation. So we have a capital, our national capital in Delhi, New Delhi, and then the surrounding area in around say 110 kilometers around that uh, we can make a peripheral of 100 kilometers. 
so right now what is there the any, any capital it's been so congested there that um, all the industry and all the technical companies are put in there so the persons which are being um, employed from let's say nearby 100 km of area they are being forced to stay in delhi itself so it is certainly becoming more and more more and more congested so what we were mandated by the government that let's have a commu- uh, transportation such that uh, the person can travel in the 100 km of vicinity let's say within less than an hour so what will happen uh, everything will be decongested to a periphery of this 100 and 120 or let's say kilometer and the person will be able to commute daily and have their work in delhi and then go back to their places in uh, ncr region for that we need a transport which has to be a high speed sort of a transportation Mm-hmm. safe secure and with a high speed so national capital region transport corporation was formed uh, we are having a company as a transport sector in rrts rail region transport sector uh, this is a train service which we run around 160 km per hour that is highest till now in the as per we consider as to be indian uh, scenario of rail transport uh, we are also sort of an economic transformer for that sector in NCR region. Per se region is that when we are moving all the industry from our, let's say, decongestion from the center of the Delhi to outside of a 100 kilometer area. So these pockets will itself emerge as an economic sector, which can be um, a prime mover for those area in the financial segment. Another thing I will add that uh, because we are now reducing this carbon footprint and now everybody needs to travel well, diesel cars and all to the center of the Delhi. So safe, pollute free and uh, faster commuter than all this carbon decrediting and all. So this sector, uh, we can say that NCRTC is a organization which is responsible for that uh, movement of transport sector from uh, let's say lesser speed uh, to a NCR region where we can have a 160 kilometer an hour and uh, less than an hour travel for every commuter a person. Got it. As far as Got my it. role is concerned, uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, in the initial stage itself that uh, I am the Guru General Manager for Operations and Signaling and Telecommunication. Uh, another part is uh, CEO of that uh, Netra, that's a subsidiary of uh, NCRTC primarily being responsible for the operations management and strategic planning for computer perspective areas. Uh, in the operations and signaling telecommunication domain, I look after all the things which is needed for implementation of new and uh, whatever technologies for the safe run of the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, operation mm-hmm. management and CEO perspective, it's uh, sort of a management of comprehensively how the things are being moving in operations of the commercial domain. Uh, now we'll come to the challenges what we find. The challenge is uh, uh, primarily two types of challenges. Uh, because earlier real technologies were uh, sort of in working in a silos where it was not connected to uh, information technology. And we say that all industrial technology related to operational technology. Uh, right now the challenge is how this information being generated in the operational domain can be transferred to commuter or let's say OEMs, mm-hmm. uh, simultaneously maintaining the security of that information which is traveling from one this OTN to ITN. Uh, right now, I find this has to be a major challenge in uh, railway sector. Uh, whenever we are moving towards a comprehensive integration of these two IT app and all cloud and all uh, data applications and to let's say information to customer commuter and then maintaining the same set of safety standard with OT in spite of having all the integrations available. So right. as right. for IT, this is a major challenge. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, I think that's that's what we're all here to talk about and challenge yeah. across the industry. Perfect. Well, what we wanted to talk about today, um, Mimindra, was the different uh, taking a layered approach to cybersecurity uh, in your rail operations. And I know rail operators across the across the world are, are dealing with this challenge. So I know for you, you're you're uh, looking at a variety of different layers of different technologies to secure your operational rail technology environments. 
you mentioned that the, the integration of OT and IT is the biggest issue, creates a much larger attack surface uh, for the rail tech environments. What do you think of, or, or how are you addressing, uh, you know, what is your first layer of defense as you think about the different layers of cybersecurity you're implementing at NCRTC? Okay. Uh, that's, a, I can say, a very permanent question to us when we are moving <laughs> towards the integration. Uh, the layer we say that, uh, ha, like, okay, I frame like this. The complete network of NCRTC, we have segmented into three layers. Uh, let's say first layer is that uh, whenever we go for any cybersecurity uh, integration or let's say uh, process of the standards following, we go for IC2443 or let's say TS50701. So according to any of these standards, there should be a three domain of uh, cybersecurity which should be maintained. In a nutshell, I can say that first you have to segment the network so that uh, pilferage of anything which is happening in a smaller domain does not go to the other domain and we can now control in that smaller domain also. Mm -hmm. Second is access authentication and authorization and data security and then data recovery. These are all parts of that system. What we strategized is a complete network we formulated in the sense that let's have a hardware based security then authorization then see whichever whoever is authorized whether they are doing the same work which are being authorized for them and then monitoring the complete network traffic through some sort of a soc or center where in the real time sense we can monitor it so now i will go to the first side where we have segmented this you mentioned rightly that this is the first layer of security. So when we say that, okay, OT is integrated to IT. So OT is purely a hardware based solution having software inbuilt in them. So from there, if the data is need to travel to IT sector, let's say any cloud. So mm -hmm. in between IT and OT, we have deployed uh, unidirectional gateways. Gateways has a very specific property of uh, they are not being software control they are primarily based on data diode or let's say optical fiber based technology so mm -hmm. even if somebody or someone has an access to the device itself but as the data or let's say electrons to a very small terms they if they can travel in one direction no one can make them to travel in another direction it's a simple property of diode or optical fiber right this technology right. we leverage to the fact that we are now isolating at hardware level from OT to IT. This is our first layer of defense. Uh, through this, we can we have isolated and segmented the small subsystems network like SCADA, uh, signaling and telecommunications, CCTV, pits pass, that is the display unit available, and rolling stock. Mm -hmm. These four or five systems were mainly uh, related to that operational security of the system. So this is the first layer we have developed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, starting with segmentation, one of the things that you mentioned when we talked earlier was uh, the idea of vulnerability management, uh, especially for rail tech assets and, and the challenge that presents, especially given the large number of assets uh, in the rail tech environment and the different OEM systems uh, or the different OEMs that are represented there. How are you dealing with that challenge uh, in your rail tech uh, technology environments? Okay, so this is again very, very, very related question because when we go for implementation of any cybersecurity systems or strategy, the first challenge which railway people en uh, encounters is simply the large number of OEM, the different protocols they are being working on, and how any single system or let's say any single solution can work out with these all simple different protocols. Uh, I'll give you an example like uh, CCTV. Uh, we are working with HTTPS whenever we want to access that protocol. Uh, platform screen door, which is very essential for safety operation. They are working on Modbus. LTE system is working on SMP, NMP protocol. Mm -hmm. And then simply signaling is entirely different protocol. SCADA, again, a Modbus protocol. 
Now, if I implement a single solution to that, or let's say I want to have some vulnerability assessment of these all simple systems. So no OEM will agree that, okay, you put in a certain system and then we will change our protocol because unless until you know you are fetching the data or you are, let's say, monitoring the data without even fetching the data, you at least should know the protocol and your device should work in that domain. So protocol conversion was a major one, first challenge. Then second challenge is that uh, when we implement a device, no OEM should want that you access to their switches. So <laughs> everyone thinks that, okay, if someone some access switches to my there, then my system will go into the corrupt mode or whatever we can say. So how we address that, uh, like I earlier said, first of all, we segmented complete network into uh, volatile or let's say safety critical item and second network, which is not directly related to train operation, non-safety or maintenance system. Mm -hmm. Now, access of system is directly through logs. Let's say I will give an example. Signaling system, there is a DMS. We call it as a data management center uh, system. This data management system is primarily logging all the information which is available inside the signaling and operation. So what we, what we thought, look at from DMS or subsystem server, will push all information to a simple server mm -hmm. and this server and the IT server, which is let's say cloud communicating with cloud, we'll put at a international gateway in between them and gateway itself act as a protocol converter so that I have a simple protocol as a gateway and any mode bus or SNMP or wherever it is, they will only push the data. When we say that OEM is only pushing the data, no OEM has any, any problem so far. If I want to have pull the data from OEM system, then they will definitely have some objection. So this is strategy. Earlier, the unidirectional gateway need has need to have some push and pull both. Now we have changed the design and we have said that, okay, only push of the data from OEM side will be there. And then from IT side, it can pull the data from that server, which is protected by the user gateway. So this challenge we have addressed through changing the mechanism itself that we are not pulling, pull, we are not pushing the data towards OEM. We are only, OEM is pushing the data towards the gateway. Right. Another right. challenge like uh, OEM's um, acceptability of any solution. So what we thought that, uh, why not put all OEMs on a single board, on board with the initial gateway? And let's discuss that how the technology can be leveraged so that we can present a solution, not only uh, ap applicable to our NCRTC region, but itself it can be scalable to any rail sector. Then only we can say that, okay, technology we have applied in a sense that it can be beneficial to everyone. Like in the cyber security threat is same in Europe or Australia or Asia Pacific, or you can say uh, US or Canada, anything. So mm -hmm. what we thought that, okay, pull all the OEM on a symbol board and then decide that what, what solution we can implement. So this push-pull technology uh, solution, uh, we were able to find out through that OEM suggestions itself. Right. So more these two methodologies were adopted. Yeah, more of a passive uh, versus an active approach uh, to yeah. uh, gathering the data. Um, where do you, or how are you um, uh, gathering intelligence on known vulnerabilities in the different systems that you have today? Is that coming from the OEMs? Or are you using third-party solutions for that? What's the approach? Okay, so I will answer this in two times. First of all, um, how do we reach at a conclusion that, okay, there is some vulnerability, some threat perception available to the network per se in the points. So what we did initially, we put in a cyber security audit for the IT sector because we have an integration of IT and OT. So we initially OT vendors and uh, OEM, as you rightly said, were not on the board that, okay, I'll not allow any third party to put into, into my system. So what we thought that, okay, let's first go on IT sector. So we had a certain audit of cyber security audit from the, uh, for the IT sector itself. And when complete uh, audit was performed, they made a certain reports and we had a points. These points we discussed with all OEMs from the OT side. 
then they came up with a solution that okay let's put our threat perception to your table also that okay from oem sides these may be the points but oem will not uh, this I'm not blaming them or not as uh, to per se any person specific, but what I'll say that they will not look, they will not tell us that what is going inside their system. What they will tell that, okay, whenever you are integrating my system to anyone, then this link of this integration is only the problem and how it can happen. So, uh, but as far as our experience and through log analysis of each OEM and the network study conducted by our own technical team plus the team which is providing the cyber security solution like generalization gateway so we both of us studied where could be the vulnerable point and then we discussed with them uh, with the experience of cyber security audit, audit of it and the points generated we made a comprehensive statement that these may be the accessibility uh, threat may be perceptible to the system itself this was the approach we adopted for them. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, another layer of cybersecurity that people are concerned about, um, Nandendra, is uh, the threat of insiders. And I know, you know, from talking to a variety of different uh, rail CISOs, that kind of breaks down into maybe two camps. One being the access that the OEM vendors uh, have uh, to your systems. And then the other is, the insider access that your own people at NCRTC have uh, to this system. How are you thinking about this challenge and, and taking steps to address it? Okay, so continuing with the, the earlier description I provided in uh, through UNESCO Gateway, a uh, second one is that uh, how the insider threats are being managed. This is, I can say from all my experience, the most difficult task any cybersecurity officer or official or management can address to okay. uh, how we are addressing it uh, because this can uh, not be that you cannot provide access to these guys they are available because you have to provide them access because these are the oem people but nobody can say that uh, anyone cannot be become hostile at any point of time maybe xyz reasons mm -hmm. may be available so what we do uh, we have provided kiosk before access to each system so these kiosks are basically the scanner of the devices which we are going to put into the system mm -hmm. so these kiosks can scan pen drive any memory stick or the your laptops or the access terminal whichever you want to access to the system but this can protect only certain limited amount that you no virus are being in your system uh, nothing is a sort of a which can harm in unintentionally to the uh, OT system. But if you want to have any intention over it that, okay, I want to damage this because I have the software available, how you can address to this. So, but still we haven't de deployed this, but yes, we design point of view, we have made it a, a system that uh, we will have a certain checkpoints in the network available. These checkpoints will decide that, okay, these are the devices authorized to access plus what this device can do and then we'll real-time monitor that okay this device has been put in because it was unauthorized device unauthorized in the sense that it was not intended to do what they are doing right now so this will generate a flag or red alarm and then this will pull out the device itself and block the network access now how we are going to do it uh, we have uh, a complete discussion with the uh, lot of uh, i will not say lot of two or three global uh, service provider for this type of solution uh, silas servilo or waterfall in one of them and uh, at this stage i can say that three stages i have made a strategy first one was that hardware based solution first layer second this kiosk and uh, scanning system third this real-time integration and real-time monitoring of the watch, which device is doing what and whether it was authorized to do or not, and then blocking it right away at the real time. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, I can say that our design is free frozen and I have put in a timeline of next three to four months to put this system into this OT network. Once I finishes this uh, gateway work and all access again 
assessment that how it is functioning but it is on my cards that okay this is my third stage of processing where i will put uh, the solution offered by uh, Silas or Servillo and then find out what is happening in there. So this is my strategy to find out which device was using the real time information or put into the network, but it was not authorized to do it. And then we'll pull it, pull out, pull it out this device itself. Got it. Got it. Uh, uh, I guess the question I have next is, uh, does this cause any challenges with the OEMs when you're looking to implement continuous monitoring or, or access restrictions uh, on their uh, teams? Yes, uh, rightly said. This is a, another challenge when we say that we are going to have a continuous monitoring or putting our devices into your system. So the solution or the design we have discussed and finalized is simple that uh, we'll go for a non-intelligent switch in the network. Mm -hmm. So first of all, non-intelligent switch is in the network. Then one fear of the system that it may hamper the routing itself or the data transmission, it can be ruled out because we are then in the passive system, passive listener of the system. Second is that you cannot talk to the system, only listen to the system. So when we say to the OEM that we are not talking to the system, what we are doing, let's say it's a 24 port switch being available in the network, that is a non-intelligent switch itself. We just listen to the switch, what is happening? Because we are the receiver, we cannot transmit any data. This right. in any case we can do. Uh, so OEM are being given such a confidence and we had a demo itself uh, with uh, all these subsystems OEM and then we threw, threw a challenge to them. Okay, I have put in my devices there. Do you just prove that I can at any time uh, transmit the data and harm you? Then uh, to our own satisfaction and to the satisfaction of OEM itself, uh, two subsystems provider I uh, requested to have that uh, system challenge accepted. I'll not name the OEM, but yes, I can assure you that uh, with this listening or let's say passive approach of listening to the system, we are not talking to the system. We could be able to demonstrate that uh, nothing is going to happen. But uh, as a CISO, I will say that whenever we want to deploy a technology or deploy a solution for cybersecurity, we must be making comfortable or have a confidence of OEM itself. Otherwise, this strategy won't work because if right. any one right. of it is pulling out from that network and not supporting the implementation, it will be a difficult process. Well, everything wow. has to go through operations and be yes. looked at through an operational lens, certainly. All right. Well, I, I'm curious uh, as you're implementing, looking to implement uh, continuous monitoring, usually the next step for organizations when they've done that is to implement a uh, regular uh, cybersecurity operation center or a CSOC or a yeah. SOC, depending on your, your terminology. Um, are you, have you already implemented that step? Or are you looking into that now that you're doing uh, continuous monitoring within the organization or within the, the rail tech environment? Uh, I will say it like this, that uh, implementation of SOC has a three steps, what we have uh, strategized it. First step is that SOC won't work unless until you provide a complete segmentation of the network, implement the hardware-based systems, and then scanning of the network and insider threat management. First, you complete these two steps. Then you design a system where you can put in these uh, listener or we say passive listeners through SOC where you will deploy these, uh, I will say a sensor in the network, or we can terminalize it with any other thing you can provide it. So once, First step and second step is completed. Third, even the third step of designing the system and putting the sensor where we'll be listening to the network. This is also being done. I'm just waiting that all the two steps, earlier two steps, what are the results of these? Again, we'll have some sort of assessment. Right. Uh, some, right. some sort of uh, throwing the challenge. In fact, the service provider for that uh, Udirshan Gateway, we have thrown a challenge itself that we will be uh, uh, intentionally trying to penetrate the network and still the directional gateway shouldn't allow this. 
after this test let's say i have put in a timeline of december end and uh, within this two three months we will start implementing this soc our target we have fixed as to be after the march uh, and we should be able to have soc implemented and uh, then we will be able to share the complete uh, outcomes or let's say learning of these three steps to the global audience that okay these were our strategy and these has worked as if now right all right all right makes sense i would i would uh, say be careful if you're doing any kind of penetration testing <laughs> yes <sure. laughs> i've i've heard horror stories uh, yeah. from that regard well, Manvendra, uh, I guess the last layer or the last topic you mentioned earlier uh, when you went through the different layers was uh, talking about backup and recovery um, in case the, the main primary systems are breached or uh, shut down. Um, I know one of the big conversations in the rail industry uh, that people are tackling is this question of uh, doing things in the cloud versus on premise. Um, and it's so, certainly a question as you talk about backup and recovery systems. How are you thinking about backup and recovery in general? And, and how are you just addressing more broadly the question of moving to the cloud versus doing things on prem? Okay. So uh, we'll go like this uh, in any cybersecurity uh, strategy or let's say comprehensive solution. Uh, this data recovery and uh, okay, everything has lost and then how you are moving towards again to the serviceable level which you are adapting before that attack has happened. Our strategy is very simple. We will have a hybrid approach. We will have a, our memory management or let's say data management at cloud plus on-prem server both. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as of now, the technology is available and the ecosystem which is available for railway signaling and SCADA and rolling stock, it's all on-prem server. And uh, when we say that, okay, we have it, it traditionally, it is being isolated from any sort of IT network. And then we have provided this uh, gateway and itself, these uh, hardware-based solutions are having a dual sense of memory or data backup in itself there is a data backup so on-prem server and then data backup of this on-prem server we are isolated to the outside world through this gateway so at one layer we have in introduced that okay now from on-prem server itself data lost we can have a complete recovery if anything is lost because then the passive server or which is not in the active mode we can be put it into the active system now comes towards the it side so it we have gone for complete cloud management we are not having any sort of on-prem server for any it application so inherently uh, whenever we are going for cloud always we have a data backup available there and uh, this data backup not only through the cloud but of course we are uh, managing the data which is a critical data needed for making the system booting up and again to a certain level of service level before the attack, we are also uh, having a data center or data cube type of thing where all the data which is critically needed for making a system up is also being stored in our on-prem system also. So for running of the system, cloud plus on-prem server, both as a hybrid approach, we are adopting for any data recovery or let's say after the attack to a make, making the service to a level which before the attack was there. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. All right. So, Mandendra, uh, as we kind of wrap things up here, uh, as somebody that's going through this journey uh, presently at building a cybersecurity and risk management uh, uh, program for your operational rail technology systems, what most important bit of advice would you like to leave with other uh, rail operator uh, CISOs? Okay. Uh, I will specifically address because uh, I have worked in the railways and a CSO as a railway. So I will say that uh, we have a very little knowledge of the cybersecurity domain railway sector. This we have to first admit ourselves that uh, whatever we say, uh, we are put in, in a very uh, challenging environment where we have to learn a lot of things. I will say a lot of things. First of all, whenever I interacted with any railway personnel, 
their first prime excuse was that okay railway system or ot technologies are isolated from a outside world so nothing will happen to us then i showed them the history where in the last uh, let's say 5 and 6 year approximately 17 to 18 attacks have materialized which have resulted into either a ddos type of a thing or complete unsafe situation uh, referenced to the uh, availability of the service i will not say that uh, unsafe of like train operation but of course unavailability of the service but this is another our part of a responsibility to make system run so what i will say that uh, first of all let us come out of that myth that operational technologies are isolated to the uh, it technology or the world they are being an integrated part because without digitalization of it ot integration you cannot run the system right now so whenever coming out of the system first you have created you have crossed the barrier i will say cross the barrier then generate the awareness in the system because railway engineers are more or less very less aware about this technology of cyber sure. security threat and domain so what we as an ncrtc do uh, we have uh, requested every expert being available in this cyber security domain to have sharing the experience and uh, i will say that uh, at this juncture i want to thanks uh, uh, silas servilo waterfall terrafens all these four five service global provider which came forward and say that okay if you are open to listen to us then we are more than offer open to offer the solution itself so what i will suggest that please engage uh, four five good global players in this come out of the myth that okay nothing is going to happen to the railway operation technology and implement these three steps what i from my experience can share a uh, hardware based that solution for uh, joining the network then uh, threat perception being mitigated of the person which are being hostile to the environment uh, and third one is that soc because in isolation or in silos if you implement one or two solution then you are almost as vulnerable as earlier you would have been without application of these one or two steps you had to have all the three step being implemented this right. i can right. share with my experience yeah and i i, I hear you say and it's it's critical to reach out to the operational teams that you're working with and have the teams the cyber teams and the operations teams working together and doing the same thing with the vendor community um i hear those as themes uh, pretty commonly so uh, not surprising uh, great advice uh, for our audience all right uh okay. lastly mendra mendra If someone wanted to get in contact with you, with you, they uh, wanted to have a chat. Uh, what's the easiest way for somebody to reach you? Okay, uh, I'm being available on LinkedIn and uh, WhatsApp, and uh, I'll share the numbers uh, anytime. Can I will be more than happy to contribute to this community of the cyber security in parts in the real domain because I feel this is a um, let's say most. Uh, living in that myth of nothing will happen to railway sector so i want to open that okay and everything can happen and we have to be very prepared for this right we we, we linkedin and whatsapp and i'll share the numbers and the link codes all right perfect well we we certainly appreciate it we are a big believer in evangelizing the challenge in the and the the ways of addressing the challenges as well uh, so we appreciate you taking the time So thank you very much for joining us today. Uh and for our Secure Tracks audience, thank you for listening. That's the end of our show today. Until next time, keep those tracks secure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for it.